What's up everybody, how's it going? A few days ago, we hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. That is just incredible. To think that I only started posting seriously and consistently on YouTube about two and a half months ago, and that now we're at 25, actually 26,000 subscribers is just mind-blowing. I really wanna give genuine thanks to all of you you're motivating me so much to keep posting videos about Google, about Algo Expert, software engineering, entrepreneurship, everything. Thank you so much. I get so many questions these days that I just don't have the time to answer. So I figured that as a 25K subscriber special, I would do a fun Q&A style video where I answer your questions. The other day I posted in the community tab on YouTube and a lot of you asked a bunch of really cool questions. I'm gonna go through some of them now. Of course, I cannot go through all of them, so please don't be sad if I skip your question. It's nothing personal. Also, if I think that I can make a full-blown video out of your question, I'm probably just gonna do that, so stay tuned. And lastly, I'll put timestamps to all the questions in the comments below. That way, if there's a particular question that you wanna go see, you can check it out. With that said, give a preemptive like to this video because you know it's gonna be awesome. Subscribe if you haven't already, and let's dive into the questions in no particular order of importance. So the first question is gonna be from Max Howard, and he asks, Clement, how to fuck? I think that this is a very, very good question. You can tell that it's well thought out, and to be honest, I think that I'm uniquely positioned to answer this question. The key thing that you have to do is- Oh no, there's some sort of weird glitch with my camera there. I think it was still recording though. Anyway, Max, I hope that that answers your question. Fantastic question, really good job on that one. And for everybody else watching, let me know in the comments what you thought about my answer, I'm very curious. What should we do when recruiters don't respond to our messages on LinkedIn? This is very much like dating, and you've got two options. The first one is to contact other recruiters. The second option, which you can do in parallel with the first one, is to keep following up with this first recruiter, but to do it in an exponential back off sort of way, where you follow up maybe three days later, and you say, hey, did you get my message? Then if they don't answer, you message them again, maybe seven days later, and maybe one more time in two weeks, and then you end it. When are the systems design questions coming on Algo Expert? The hyper ambitious part of me wants to say in one month, but the more realistic part of me wants to say in two to three months. In either case, it's happening, and it's gonna be the best systems design course on the market. Are you single? Sorry to break it to you, Megan. I'm not single. Does age matter in applying to big tech companies and startups? It shouldn't matter, and from what I've seen and heard, it doesn't matter. To give you an example, this is pretty anecdotal, but still, at Google, I worked with a lot of people of all ages. I practice a lot of data structures and algos, but if I try to approach the same question after a week or two of practicing, I tend to forget the approach which was used to solve the question. How do I improve upon this? I'll definitely be making a video on this topic sometime in the future, but I do want to address it now since it's got a lot of likes. There are two things at play here. First of all, you have to realize that algorithms and coding interview questions are not meant to be memorized. The whole point is for you to become good at problem solving and knowing when to apply and use certain patterns or techniques or how to derive certain patterns or techniques or approaches when you're faced with a new problem, but not to try to memorize the problem and say, oh, here I remember that I need to use sorting, or here I remember that I need to traverse a graph. No, you want to practice enough to where from any question, you can sort of derive how to solve it by just hacking away at it because you've done so many other questions. Not just trying to reach into your memory bank for the approach that you used previously. The second thing at play here is that you might just have to do that same question more than once. It's totally normal if you have to do, especially a difficult question, multiple times for the pattern that's used in it to finally sort of ingrain itself in your mind. As an example, there are certain questions that are not obviously graph questions, but once you do them multiple times, we're talking at least three times, for instance, or maybe just two times, you will start to really get that sort of second nature 
intuition that comes to you that tells you, yeah, this is a graph question. Of course I can transform the input into a graph. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that it might just be that you just need to do this question a couple more times. What's the last thing you watched on Netflix? I think it was the very popular Black Mirror show that Netflix has, and I watched it back in January of this year, 2019, when I was on a flight, a 14-hour flight to South Korea for work at Google. Unfortunately, I haven't had much time to watch Netflix since. Who's your favorite YouTuber? That's a tough question. It's hard to have a favorite YouTuber. I watch all kinds of content on YouTube. I used to watch so many prank videos. I could name all the prank channels that I watched. I watch a lot of informational content. So Graham Stephan, for instance, a lot of the tech channels. I also watch comedians, all kinds of stuff. I also love getting into the sort of weird part of YouTube where the YouTube algorithm brings you down some sort of weird path and you're like, how did I end up here at 3.30 a.m.? How much do you bench? So my personal record is 315 pounds at a body weight of about 170 pounds. I'm gonna put a video of this somewhere in the background here. Now, if you're into lifting, you know that strength is very fickle. It's very ephemeral. So this is not what I currently bench. Right now, I'm probably about 40 to 50 pounds weaker than this. This is my all-time best. I benched this right before I graduated from college. So this video that you're watching is me about a week or maybe a few days before graduation. Fun fact, the Clement that you just saw here did not know how to code. I had never written a line of code in my life in that video, which dates back to, I don't know, like three years ago, three years and a couple of months ago now. How do you fight coder's block? So I'm gonna assume that you mean that feeling when you don't know how to solve a problem, you've been banging your head at it for a while and you just don't know. If that's what you're talking about, there are two options. One of them is I just do something that's completely unrelated to coding, go to the gym, go to sleep, go shower. The other option is I literally just keep banging my head against the computer until it works. And both options have actually worked for me. How do I get into Fang? I'm a CS major, freshman, and also fairly new to coding. Love it so far. So this is gonna sound pretty self-markety, but I'm dead serious. Assuming you stick to your computer science degree and you actually work hard and you really like coding, watch all of my videos, especially the ones about Google, about Fang, about how to get into Google. I've made a lot of them, how I got my interviews, six tips on how to get into Google. I'll be making a lot more in the future. Listen carefully to all the advice that I give in those videos. Apply it. Buy Algo Expert. Do all the problems. Start early. And I bet you, you will get into one of the four, fan, four or five fan companies by the time you're done with college or maybe during an internship in college. And of course, use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. Hi Clement, I want to buy Algo Expert, but I don't have much knowledge about data structures. I only know arrays and linked lists. Should I buy Algo Expert? Yes, we actually answer this in our FAQ. Maybe we should make it more prominent on the website. But yes, I always tell people, all that you need if you wanna start practicing coding interviews, if you wanna do Algo Expert, is you need fundamental programming skills. You should know for loops, loops in general, conditional statements, how to declare functions, how to manipulate maybe arrays and strings at a basic level. But everything else you will pick up on the website. If you don't know what a heap is, we have a video on how to construct a heap. If you don't know what a binary search tree is, we have a video on how to construct one. You will pick up the knowledge that you need as you go. As a side note, we're actually working right now on a bunch of videos about data structures as additional content on the website. I can't promise when we'll be coming out with those, but we will be coming out with them in the near future. Being a resident of India, how do I apply for a Google job abroad, like in Singapore or Mountain View, and will they accept me given that we have Google offices here in India? My understanding is that yes, you can definitely do that. You can apply either online to one of the offices that you want, or you can contact a recruiter in those offices. So for instance, a recruiter in Mountain View. There's gonna be some stuff with visas, H-1B1s. I'm not too familiar with those topics, so you should definitely look into that, but it's certainly doable. Another option that I do wanna mention is that there's a lot of internal mobility once you are in a company like Google. So one option might be to start in Google 
Google India, and after one year, you apply for an internal transfer to another office like Mountain View or New York City, which I would highly recommend. And that might be an easier option. You developed Algo Expert in React, but at Google you worked in Angular. Why did you pick React, and what are the differences between the two? I'm probably not going to address the differences here because it's probably too long to talk about, but there are two reasons that we picked React. First of all, at the coding bootcamp that I was at, I learned React, not Angular, and since I started Algo Expert a little bit before I started working at Google, all I knew at the time was React. But also the second reason is just, I, I love Google, but React is just so much better than Angular. Angular is created by Google, by the way, and React is created by Facebook. React is just much more lightweight, it's much more fun and a pleasure to work with than Angular, and it's just better. I hope I didn't offend any Angular developers out there, but I doubt they disagree with me. I wanted to know how much Algo Expert cost at the start and what does it cost now. So I'm going to be making a lot more videos about the business side of things with Algo Expert, but at the very beginning, the only investment that Antoine, my co-founder, and I put was $5,000. We each put 2500 This was for the initial expenses, like buying an iPad for our videos and buying a few other things, you know, registering the domain and hosting it on Google Cloud Platform and all that stuff. And ever since then, it has been profitable and self-sustaining. Today, it costs a lot more. Most of our costs go to advertising and affiliates. It varies from month to month. It's definitely increasing every month because we're making more and more revenue every month and we have to advertise more, we have more and more affiliates. However, it's not increasing linearly with our revenue, if that makes sense. It's sort of on a more downwards trending curve. So in the month of September right now, I think our costs are at about 20,000 US dollars. Can you give me a good project idea to work on using Java? So this is gonna be pretty tricky because backend projects are by nature less visual. They have less wow factor in most cases, and they're maybe harder to grasp immediately from a couple lines on a resume. But one idea that comes to mind is you could maybe consume the YouTube public API, hopefully they have a Java interface, and you could put on a web page, so you probably would have to write a tiny bit of front end, but nothing fancy, you could put on a web page data about maybe tech YouTubers and comparing how fast certain tech YouTubers are growing compared to others, and maybe, you know, you would be showing some of your Java skills with regards to hitting that API, and maybe you can get creative and show some graphs or show a bunch of other data, something like that. Just an idea. I hope that helps. Maybe other people in the comments can give you ideas about Java projects. If you have some, let him know. David Blaine style street card magic at 250k subs, you got it. Tell us your daily routine from the moment you wake up till you go to sleep. It's coming. Which game did you play and stream? Mostly World of Warcraft and a little bit of Hearthstone. Woo, let's go Clement. Been a pleasure watching this growth. Keep up the good work, man. Chris, where's the question? Do you have Romanian relatives because of your last name? Yes, my father is Romanian. What do you think about React plus TypeScript? It's the best thing ever. What is your next step? That is a fantastic question, Max, but I don't think that this video is the place to answer it. I'll probably try to tackle this in a future video or maybe in a future Q&A or something. What are the things that annoy you the most when working as a programmer and the opposite, what is the most fun about it? The most annoying thing by far and away is getting a new developer environment set up with documentation that's out of date. It's so frustrating, you just keep getting random errors that nobody knows about, and it's just super frustrating, super mentally exhausting. The most fun thing is when you're working on a problem and you have bugs in your code, you're trying to fix them, you spend a lot of time, and eventually it just works. There's nothing more satisfying than to solve a problem or than to build something. It's so empowering, it's so fun, that's why I love programming. How do low-income students learn the skill sets and mindsets to be a professional like you. The beauty of the day and age that we live in is that you have access to so much information if you have an internet connection. Just YouTube, for example, has a wealth of free knowledge. Go on YouTube, watch educational channels, find good content, and build that mindset up. I realize that this is easier said than done, especially if you don't have the necessary support system around you, but we do have all of these amazing resources just at our fingertips. Are you from the San Francisco Bay Area growing up or in college? 
No, I'm from the greater New York City area and I went to college in Philadelphia. Did you take any computer science courses with your math degree? No. What was your work experience prior to getting hired at Google? I had zero work experience, literally. I just was a public speaking advisor in college, but that's about it. No internships, no anything. You can see all of this in my video titled, The Resume That Got Me Into Google. What are the best ways for people who don't have a CS degree to land interviews? How do you use LinkedIn to your advantage if you don't have any experience in the field? I will definitely be making a video about this topic, but I did address it in the video that I made titled, How to Get Into Google. One of the tips that I gave was exactly about this and exactly about the link LinkedIn thing, so go check it out. A path for learning web development through online courses and other free resources, and what approach must one follow to master concepts and technologies by self-learning efficiently? I will have to make another video about these topics. Really good questions, but I don't think I can condense this in this video. That's gonna be it for this video. Let me know what you thought about this Q&A. Did you like it? Do you wanna see another one at 50K subs or even later? Let me know. Don't forget to like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.